Awesome. <laughs> keep throwing them at us, please. Hashtag OW Open. And I keep talking about the OW Open. This is how it does break down. Every week we remind you, but this is the format. It's an open bracket. You can sign up with your friends. And I do love that. I'm such a sucker for it. The fact that you and five compadres can go ahead, join the bracket, and try and compete. And perhaps you never know if you've got the skills to pay the bills. You could very well be flying off to Atlanta to the E-League Arena, or at least securing a spot in the playoffs. That's what they're battling for. You can see the group stage there. The top teams from playoffs and the teams that acquire the necessary points through the league. You don't necessarily have to win the grand final to secure a spot in the playoffs. That's just the easiest route to do so. In fact, I talk about that easy route. Let's look at some of the teams that have already done so. These are your leaders, and this is just for Europe. You can see Misfits and Rogue are now locked in. These are the two European sides. We will not be seeing any more of us. They'll just be happily putting their feet up with a cup of tea, a cup of brew, and watching the rest of the Overwatch go down. And alongside that, you may be surprised to see LG. I'll explain all of that in just a moment if you haven't been staying up to date with things. They haven't migrated. There has just been a little bit of a transition. And alongside that, Anox and Reunited are rocking this alongside creation. All so close, and that's going to be changing this week, gents, as that all three of them are going to be hot contenders for the top spot this week. Following that, though, let's have a quick look at what's coming up today. We do start with Pret's OW Kings, two teams that have got a lot of work to do if they want to be climbing up those rankings, getting some points. They do need a quarter to a semi-final finish this week to stay competitive, and they know that as well. One of these teams, however, is going to be ending disappointed. That will be casted by the people to my left. And talking of the people to my left, let's address that LG presence just for a moment, because I do not want uh, there to be confusion when they pop up later in the brackets. Sure. There's been an organizational switch. Who wants to take this one? Who wants to explain the story, Josh? Uh, sure. Uh, so last week I did mention that there was some vagueness coming out of Siegel and uh, the former Luminosity team. Uh, just a couple of tweets, some behavior that wasn't really adding up as, as far as like we're going to be playing it for, for Luminosity forever. So uh, I mentioned just a little bit of weirdness with that. And then just th during the week, me, yeah. uh, they actually did drop the Luminosity brand. And of course, immediately Luminosity said, here's our new team. It is too strong. So if you've been paying attention to the European scene recently, too strong up-and-coming team makes sense to grab them up while you have the opportunity so luminosity is now the former two strong yeah. and uh, luminosity north american squad is now playing under nrg well i saw shaq's tweet did you yeah. guys see it oh as well? yeah. yeah just yeah, straight yeah, up yeah, like yeah. did you hey, see the play of the game dance tweet do you want to come to my friend <laughs> like it was just straight <laughs> up like i want to get the best team in the world and he's not well, i couldn't find envy he'll take lg instead <laughs> um john I'm, there's not this isn't the only shift that's been going on i saw actually a tweet from josh just saying like there's so many orgs that are stepping into this space they're running out of teams to pick up it's insane how quickly this is uh, this is evolving and getting picked up yeah it is uh things are picking up steam at a rather crazy right. At the yeah. moment, because it almost feels like each week it's like, oh, guys, just remember, these guys are now called this. These guys are now formally this, and yeah. it it becomes a little bit difficult to sort of keep keep track of everything sometimes, especially now when you get organizations switching from NA to Europe as well. So it, it looks like it's crossing the Atlantic too. So we just have to be a little bit uh, more vigilant and on our toes. We will be staying rightfully on our toes as we do progress then into our first game. Now, I said it was Pret's OW Kings. Let's have a quick look at the Vito. Let's have a glance. I summon it with my magical powers, and we're going to be starting on Barney, following that King's Row and Dorado. Okay, so we're actually staying rather vanilla for the first time yeah. in a while. We have seen, I've seen so many people complaining that, like, wait, why, why, hang on a second, I thought these maps weren't popular. You've seen uh, Numbana, excuse me, let me get this right. We've seen Anubis pop up a lot. Hannah Moore is even showing up. I haven't seen a Volskaya yet myself. Have you? Still no Volskaya? I mm. think it's still the least popular. Yeah, still not here. Maps, yeah. 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 No, not here at least. It may be in your weekend casts. But this is the map pool between Pretz and OW Kings. Now, John, could you set the scene between these two teams? I feel like there's a lot of similarities between them in terms of success. Yeah, there, there certainly can be. OW Kings was a team that for quite a while was every so often like breaking into the top eight, um, occasionally taking maps off and very occasionally even beating some of the very, very established teams here. And they're just generally really good, but uh, perhaps a little bit inconsistent. And I would say... To be honest, Pretz is in a very similar position. We've also had the pleasure of watching them play uh, very recently as well. We'll come on to that in a bit. Um, but again, a very strong core group of players where when they're on the ball and it's their day, watch out, don't mess with these guys. Yeah. But you never know when that's likely to be. Do, do, that sounds a little bit like a cop-out, John. Like, I mean, we always say this, don't we, about some teams like, oh, on the day they can deliver, sometimes they can't. Like, what, what's well, the, where are the weaknesses lying? Um, it's just individuals. I mean, it's, I it's tricky it's because to no, because 
the the weaknesses don't actually lie uh, okay. with any individuals. It's just on some days, for example, there'll be mistiming alts, the coordination isn't quite there, and you, they lose team fights even though individually they're doing great. And I, I guess that's what we mean when we say they can beat someone when it all comes together. They're capable, there's no doubt about it, and that same can be said for Pretz as well. As we warm ourselves up, the first best of three of the day of the weekend, we have two-day Overwatch extravaganza to be thrown in your face. Now is Numbani and your casters better enjoy this best of three. Thank you very much, Alex. Here we are in game number one. Keep in mind, everyone, that this is just a best of three series. It is a single elimination tournament as well. So uh, if they want to be trying to qualify, basically every single map is super important. We're already only 10 seconds away from the doors opening, so we can see the defense. It is going to be Pretz starting off on D with the very common Lucio Zenyatta combo. We actually saw that in essentially every game last weekend. So yep. don't expect that to change. Mercy and Symmetra, of course, have kind of fallen off the face of the earth. Uh, McCree Reaper is a very, very common DPS combo and D.Va and Roadhog will be their tanks of choice. The attacking team already out the gate now. Very similar composition as well, except you see Adetonian on that Genji uh, for that added mobility and Winston so he can leap up on these ledges and attack the defense. That's right. A uh, little, little bit of a uh, different choice in terms of tanks here and already an early charge coming out of Tweedy. So we have a uh, wow. very nice shot there. We've got uh, basically Reinhardt and Winston on one side versus D.Va and Roadhog on the other. All of the tanks available in this game. Haven't seen that in a little while. Uh, we are missing Azaria. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, so we, Zarya, we, we need the triple tank with Zarya the Zarya. will very much, very likely pop out uh, once the payload portion actually begins because yes. uh, basically just being able to spot bubble people is very, very valuable. But so far, uh, just the breakdown of what's happening so far, defense has been holding on quite well. Adetonian chase all the way over to the gift shop is going to get taken out by mistakes on that Zenyatta. And Zenyatta's rise of popularity has been mostly because his damage output can match his healing. He actually doesn't have to actively heal anyone. So if you've got a sharpshooter, someone who can actually do well with a Genji, for example, with his projectile attacks, they'll be right at home on Zenyatta as well. Ooh, and uh, Buhor, or Grape, shall we call him, a little bit uh, overzealous there, running into the flashbang of McCree, but he does manage to get out in the meantime. Rib running up onto the ledge, successfully He's taking out Claws there, so that's a tank down for Pretz. Coming into this next engagement, it looks like everyone is on that first floor, and there is McCree shooting at them from across the way. Not able to get the kills he wants, though. Olba managing to pick up one. Buhor now coming in, picking up Olba, and that is four kills in a row for Pretz. OW Kings are going to get completely reset here. Yeah, Pretz doing a great job defense and Nalar hasn't even been shaken off of this ledge. He's just been freely shooting as McCree down at the point yep. this entire time and Nalar is definitely the DPS to keep your eye on. Freed is actually a player that didn't play with Pretz yesterday. Uh, John and I actually cast a best of seven with Pretz yesterday and Freed was not in that roster so I'm going to be very interested to see how he does here on this defensive Reaper but Adetonian here as the attacking Genji trying to get that high ground of course so he can just get some sight lines on those supports way in the back. He is actually playing separate from his whole team so Genji needs to basically be aware of when his team runs in. There's the sound barrier here for the defense keeping everyone 500 extra HP. Adetonian if I were him I would not be attacking the D.Va straight up. Definitely want to try and find those squishier targets. You can see him getting taken oh, out man. and defense just looking super solid here. Very very, very strong indeed. And uh, may maybe we should take the opportunity here. Uh, the, uh, the the player uh, that you see on your screen as Buhor Paduha. Yeah. We should probably explain to the viewers sure. why we now call him Grape. Uh, so in English, we would pronounce that Buhor Paduha, but it's yep. kind of a weird name. But uh, in Russian, actually, it's pronounced Vino Gradina, which is basically just the word Grape, G-R-A-P-E. So we're going to call him Grape. <laughs> uh, he basically corrected us yesterday, and, and uh, Grape is just much easier to say. Anyway, yep. Anatonian does have his Dragon Blade available. We actually have several ultimates available on the offense. No Sound Barrier just yet for Clown, but he will have it as we engage here. Uh, the Transcendence is going to come out on the defense. Anatonian pulls out his Dragon Blade anyway. D.Va ultimate is going to chase them all away. Claws actually does get the kill on Rib, the attacking Winston as well. And defense still standing strong. Nalar doing a great job just throughout. Ooh. You can see him get the kill on Anatonian before going down to the enemy Zenyatta. But defense has been just terrific so far far. Only 40 seconds left now for OW Kings to try to make this happen. Thankfully, they do still have their sound barrier, but not much else in the way of offensive ults. This is a really tricky situation for them to be in. They need to make sure this next push absolutely nails it. And I feel like the Tweety Rib combination, uh, they, when they push out slowly, they're behind the Reinhardt shield. That's great. But every time Rib seems to leap across on Winston, he just gets taken down first off. Should we have been seeing maybe something different coming out of OW Kings from the outset? Well, no time for that now. Transcendent starting, and we have got the fight on the way. We've got Sound Barrier as well on the point. Everybody is trying to take this now, and Rib actually gets taken out very early on. 
uh, doing a very good job of picking up Freed, and that's the first three kills in favor of OW Kings. They waited until overtime, Joshi, but it looks like they might be able to do this now. Yeah, finally they get the edge that they need, and you can see uh, the offensive death blossom just uh, guaranteeing the kill on Lucio. Of course, I would not have done that myself, but it looks like he is going to be switching for this streets phase. This is a position where you would see quite a lot of switches. Olba is going to be going onto that McCree to get that range advantage. Reaper makes more sense when you're trying to take a single point, but uh, definitely want to try and catch those defenders as they come running back in. Uh, Rib, I was thinking if they hadn't, if they had actually just failed and not taken A, I think I would have criticized Rib for not uh, switching it up and trying to go D.Va instead. Typically, your Winston is only there because he needs to take out the Genji, and defense just didn't have a Genji, uh, they had a Reaper, sure. so yeah, Winston yeah, yeah. versus Reaper is not the best prospect for him. But Nalar is going to pop that Deadeye, uh, doesn't really add up to much as uh, he didn't even pull the trigger there, but uh, is going to be assaulted essentially by this attacking Winston, will be forced backwards, but uh, so far so good for the offense. It's very likely they're going to be able to get past this bus as it looks like the defense Ooh. is still kind of trickling in. That sound barrier just saved McCree's life, excellent timing there, and they get the kill on Reinhardt as well as wow. that Zenyatta back at the cart. So defense finally putting something together, Claws is their only member down, and the offense are losing a, a, a person here and there. Not looking as good for them. Yeah, there's a great bit of coordination coming out of there from OW Kings, but the fight is not over yet, and Nalar uh, gets taken out. Trading kills here at the moment. Pretz getting the better as a two-for-one trade pops up in the street space here on Numbani. Free doing his best to try and stem the flow here, and it looks like OW Kings are going to be pulling back. You're absolutely right about that, Josh. I feel like OW Kings could have maybe suffered a complete team wipe, but that great sound barrier, good coordination uh, with uh, with McCree there just allowed them to turn the tide a little bit. Not quite enough to get them to push it all the way there. Uh, notice the defense is not actually sitting on the cart. They are giving a little bit of a cushion so that they can keep those sight lines away from the offense. Freed is actually waiting kind of in the back line. Uh, just ben beneath him, we can see the outlines of these tanks. Of course, he's going to be looking for the squishy uh, supports, but as the sound barrier drops for the offense, Genji's actually not going to have an opportunity for a while. Tweety does get pinned and taken out by Nalar. Good combo there between Reinhardt and McCree. Adetonian has his ult. Freed has a sword out with two HP, getting a couple of kills, at least on Ulba and Clown both going down. Uh, it's great to get anything with 2 HP, but there yes. we go. The defense is starting to clean up now. Zarya did finally come out there for Grape and uh, is doing a great job. We'll have Graviton Surge ready to go. There it actually fires it immediately when he realizes he's basically all on his lonesome. Does not want that payload to hit the checkpoint, but it does in the end actually slide into that checkpoint, add some time to the clock. Yeah, and that ultimate actually ended up being very, very useful indeed, managing to grab that just as the timer ticked down. Of course, Riv is going to take a little while to get back with the rest of the team for OW Kings, but uh, they are able to reset and take a look at what the last point is going to involve. Adetonian, by the way, has switched on to Tracer in the meanwhile. Tracer makes sense here. The verticality is not going to be quite as uh, important in this stretch as he can just kind of get behind with Tracer very easily into the back lines. Grape is going to get flattened by that Earth Shatter. Look at that. They actually smash into each other as uh, the defense of Reinhardt Claws sees the pin incoming and has great timing there to basically knock him flat on his back. The uh, payload has gone through the underpass now, but offense uh, a little bit split up here. You can see Tracer actually moving in and out to the cart. Drops that Pulse Bomb. Claws goes down to the combo of Tracer and McCree, and this is the uh, push that offense needs to get around this corner. And right now, uh, basically 6v4 at the moment because Claws and Mistakes are both resetting. Don't forget, of course, the defense are going to have significantly shorter paths to run coming out of the spawn point to try and stop OW King from taking the point here. But everyone is more or less camping the spawn right now, trying to stop them from flooding out. They do manage to do so, though, and the tanks actually get a very early move on. And a little bit of a whiff on the charge there. That's going to allow Likely to go ahead and grab a little bit of unanswered damage. Four kills now. Do we have a trickle defense? We do not. And that is going to be round one complete in favor of OW Kings. The defense was actually just all over the place. You had a couple on the cart, a couple by the spawns, and a couple trying to flank around. Actually, some of them trying to push back against the offense, but did not really work out for them. You can see Nalar with that dead eye here getting a couple of kills and a nice fan there onto Winston. This is, uh, of course, during that first point defense, which looked like they were going to win mm. the game with, but uh, actually, Great job there to OW Kings. Give them credit for actually finishing the map despite only capturing A in overtime. You can see Nalar here again with some great McCree skill. Keep an eye out for him on Tracer later on as well. Freed, uh, of course, with that nice Dragon Blade at 2 HP. Definitely helping push that card along. Great highlights there for OW Kings and Pretz both. But now Pretz will have a time to beat. It's not the fastest time ever set. Really, they only had about a minute left at the end of the uh, at the end of the day. So I do give Pretz a nice opportunity here to try and beat that. Yeah, and uh, Numbani, I guess, is one of those payload maps where it's possible, uh, maybe a little bit more than some of the others. I don't know uh, how much you'd agree with that. For people to be able to 
sort of perform a full hold. It used to be that the first point is a major point of contention. The streets phase can sometimes be rather difficult, and... I mean, with the uh, with the short move out there from the spawning point, you sometimes, although admittedly less often, see teams at the very end of the map as well, just holding on for just enough time to pull it into overtime. So definitely holdable, and this is still very much wide open. Yeah, that last stretch on Numbani can definitely just come down to uh, basically the order in which kills are attained. Uh, if it's all at once, a full wipe, and then six people come running out the gate, it can be very difficult to try and break through. But the fact that OW Kings were able to get piecemeal kills allowed yeah. them to push such a long distance there, um, basically 5v1, 4v1, etc., uh, until the cart finished up there. So the doors are about to open. Defense looks actually quite similar to what we saw last time, except uh, Grape or sorry, excuse me, uh, Rib is actually going to be on that Winston uh, for defense and Tweety on the D.Va, so no Reinhardt for point A defense yeah. uh, on the side of OW Kings. All right, so they, uh, they're spread out at the moment. They want to be able to get uh, damage in from all angles by the looks of things, and Freed actually rushing very, very quickly onto the right-hand side, leaping on uh, to try and stop them from doing that, likely getting a kill off on Tonic. So that is the battle of supports. One there in favor of Zenyatta. Grape and Lar picking up a kill each for Pretz, though. And we can see Freed here basically trying to shoot everybody off the left-hand side so that the entire team can focus onto the point. That's three kills in a row now for Pretz. They are gaining a little bit of momentum, and they're going to be able possibly, yeah, definitely now, to take this first push really well played here from Pretz to start things off. Yeah, excellent work there. The tanks were the first to go down, so I mean, they did their job. They were the front line, but after that happened, the support uh, basically had nothing protecting them. Reaper was kind of a little bit out of position. The Wraithwalk obviously managed to contest for a few more seconds, but by then, all the supports were gone, all the tanks were gone, and it was a done deal. It, it was really nice to see the strategy play out there as well, Joshi, because you have the first floor there. You know that everyone's going to want to come at you from all angles, and Pretz did a great job of going to one side, shepherding everyone over, going to the other side, shepherding everyone over, and uh, basically collapsing it into the team fight. Yeah, just finding that early kill allowed them to have some momentum and essentially, yeah, basically push the uh, defense wherever they wanted them to go. So a uh, really nice offensive setup there with the Genji and Winston working together quite well. Ooh. Claws is going to be on the Reinhardt now as we start to push the payload portion. Tweety is going to get onto that Reinhardt as well for the defense. He was on D.Va just moments ago, but Nalar still on his free, his R McCree Rampage still going well for him. Everyone on the kill feed there for Pretz getting a little bit piece of the action. Deadeye is available. We got Dragon Blade available and defense has the long run back. Tweety, of course, can charge half that distance just in one shift, but <laughs> uh, I think this payload is looking really good for reaching this checkpoint just because Freed is at the front line, not allowing any defense to get anywhere close to that uh, payload. Actually, Winston's going to wow. try. Wow. I don't know about this because Primal Rage, yes, it is going to buy you a little bit of time, but at the same time with Discord Orb and the entire team collapsing upon you. All right, everyone else is coming in now, and we have Deadeye available, but Freed doing a good job with the deflect, preventing any damage from being taken there, forcing Transcendence out of OW Kings, and the payload's already almost at the destination. How good was that initial uh, Winston move? We're not going to be sure. Both teams trading kills right now. This is turning out into an all-out brawl, and uh, that, that was a very brave Great move there from OW Kings. Winston is still alive until just now, of course, as I say it, but uh, they did manage to stall that payload, and the fact that they got a couple of kills worked out for them. The sound barrier on offense was used uh, as well, so Tonic will take some time to recharge that while Clown on the defense has his available. So the uh, uh, very brave Harambe jump in actually worked out for once. That was, uh, I, I mean, when we saw that, we thought, hang on a second, Discord Orb 6v1, are you really going to do this? But I guess he just bought enough time. I was looking at the position of Tweety behind him as well, trying to say, when is the rest of the team going to catch up? And thankfully, they managed to do it around four or five seconds later. So uh, the fact that uh, Winston was able to stay alive for that long is going to be really, really good. Very crucial there. Now, Olba going to be stepping it up. He is actually speed boosted here as well, so needs to be careful looking for the skulls, trying to find them, but uh, won't be able to get any up, unfortunately, on this occasion. Manages to cancel it in time though, so you will have plenty of ult charge to work with. And now we reset and go for round two. Can Pretz now push it all the way through to the second point? Nalar falling very low on health. I thought he may have had a chance there, but of course he does get taken out, and that is just going to be all defense from there. Claws gets it finished off as well. They need an entire reset. I can't believe no one on the defense actually wow. died in that push. Clown did use his sound barrier near the start of it, so that definitely is the uh, you know the key factor here. Is fact. Uh, tonic and mistakes did not have their ults available. Well, a lot of the uh, a lot of the concentration on that was also on Rib, who managed to pop Primal Rage towards the end of that fight. So maybe that's where a lot of the damage went as well. But uh, you know, you're right. It's very unusual to see like everybody staying up there, and Pretz are going to have to think of something else. And that something else is going to come in the form of Grape, who will be switching on to Zarya, which I I, I love seeing Buhar on Zarya. I think he's absolutely excellent. 
Yeah, Zarya, of course, can be really nice for breaking open chokes. Just one Graviton Surge, even if Zarya herself is at high charge, she can actually manage to wipe a team. But great Earth Shatter there. Ulba moves Ooh. in and gets the free shots, and the Transcendent's going to keep everyone on the defense in full health. Very good stuff there. Rib was the only one to go down on the side of the defense. He's got plenty of time to rejoin them as the offense again have this very long run back. OW King's definitely putting up a good fight here. And again, it looked like... Even on offense, they may have lost A. They may have just lost the map, essentially, by not being able to take A. Now on defense, Pretz roll right through A, and finally OW King is starting to rally and actually show us their true strength. We see the Deadeye go out. The speed boost actually helps catch Olba, so the enemy McCree down very early should help keep them alive a little bit, but there goes Nalar as well. Reaper uh, free, trying to get a few shots in on uh, Reinhardt as he charges past. Now we get a bit of a Reaper duel. Both Wraithwalks are down. Now Freed has his again. So uh, sound barrier coming on the side of the offense. Should be enough to actually get them through here, but uh, they need to find some kills. The sound barrier on the defense comes out, keeps them alive, alive a lot longer. Freed getting very low on health. The Wraithwalk is going to keep him alive just briefly, but the uh, spot bubble from Zarya, the nice uh, soul consumption there from Reaper, means he can continue shooting away at this Winston. Seven health finally goes down to those monkey slaps, uh, but now we do have the payload only one meter away. Finally, they get it, add some time to the clock, and they're still at a time uh, benefit, I would say, rather than a deficit. Uh, they did finish that checkpoint slightly faster than OW Kings did. But don't forget, OW Kings also more or less breezed through the final checkpoint as well. So this is going to be a very, very tight finish. And this is exactly the story of Numbani that we were painting at the beginning of this map. All three of these points are places where defending teams can stall out attacks for a very long time. And OW Kings woke up there in the street space and did a fantastic job. Olba getting an excellent triple kill to start things off, where on McCree and Deadeye completely and utterly unabated. That is going to allow us another uh, complete and utter hold from OW Kings. And Pretz now, they're down to 1 minute and 45 seconds. They have to make this happen, but Mistake, such a crucial support on Zenyatta, is going to be respawning more than 10 seconds behind his teammates. This is going to be so difficult for them to accomplish here. Yeah, they're at a tough choke point as it is. Losing Zenyatta as your first casualty is definitely going to slow them down. They have to wait for him to respawn. I have to say that Graviton Surge from Grape was completely wasted. Unfortunately, it might as well have been eaten by a D.Va for all the good that it did them, uh, but it was kind of that desperate ult that you really, really want to try and show some discipline. The Grape does get taken out there. Olba uh, basically free reign to do whatever he wants, taking the headshot there on Reaper, trying to slow him down. Uh, Clown also gets the killing blow there, but there is the GG actually coming out from Nalar. Even though they have over a minute, I definitely would not be calling GG in this position a little if bit I were Pretz, but... Uh, I guess they feel they don't have the ultimates. They they don't have the momentum. They're just they're just throwing in the towel and uh, maybe, all of that's oh, pretty maybe true. tonic. Maybe tonic had to um, DC or something like that. But yeah, brutal end there for Pretz. I think uh, they showed a lot of promise both on defense, holding A almost the entire time, and then on offense, rolling right through A. But everything fell apart in the late game for both uh, offense and defense on Pretz side. Definitely a uh, a fluctuating story. A bit of a roller coaster ride there. We saw Pretz. Uh, doing such a good job and then uh, rolling through to a point where it was like, hang on a second, all of a sudden this has come to an absolute grinding halt. So uh, congratulations there. We will be uh, taking map number two after this, but how was your analysis of what, how you think that actually broke down for the teams? Because it, it really seemed to sway quite a lot, to be honest. Yeah, OW Kings, I think uh, both instances actually had a few moments where they were not too happy with their performance. They basically buckled down, uh, managed to get the very last push on offense to take A, and then when they were on defense, it was really, I think, the Olba show, honestly, that we saw that uh, triple yeah, Deadeye triple there at dead the end, which also forced out a Graviton Surge from Grape. So nothing went well there for Pretz toward the end, and I think that OW Kings has shown us that uh, Maybe a little bit of a slippery slope for them, but they do actually get it together, and when they do, everything works out well. So Pretz, I think um, I, we mentioned that Freed is a, a player that we did, haven't actually seen on Pretz before. Mm -hmm. I don't want to blame him, but I didn't. I didn't really see much, you know, pizzazz or like anything crazy out of him yet. I mean, let's not forget that they have had some roster changes, so they might be rotating that six slot. We used to have uh, we used to have Crollo, I believe it was, mm -hmm. uh, as played as last week, Pretz. I think. Yeah, uh, yeah either last <laughs> week or the week before, but they've been trialing a couple of people. We cast them yesterday evening. They were using someone else. Um, so I have to say, there's a lot of promise shown there for Pretz. They didn't quite manage to pull it off in the end, even though they took point A very quickly. And... I'm pretty sure, we don't know yet, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be picking Dorado after what we saw last night. A bit more analysis, and we'll explain what happened then after the break. But when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, map number two is about to begin.